technically speaking, uh, we think there's one more leg lower and then we think there, we should be pretty much done with this one. Um, so this sell off. So, uh, look for that, I guess. And if something changes, um, then we'll be agile enough and flexible enough to, um, address that. I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing I guess I would add to that is, um, we are actually seeing some oversold levels compared to dot com time. Uh, if you took like the percentage of NASDAQ and Russell that is off their all time highs, um, we're pretty getting close to dot com level. Uh, totally two different worlds that we live in today. So most tech companies are growing 40% or more, at least the ones that we invest in are. And no tech companies were growing like that when the dot com bust happened. In 2010, tech overtook oil as the world's most valuable industry. Uh, tech, tech's role has completely changed. And so it's really tough or unfortunate to have that narrative out there because um, the bounce back. So we, we had a perfect uh, almost, uh, what would you call it? Like test run, trial run with COVID. We had extreme economic conditions. The whole country shut down. Um, you could only go to the grocery store. We saw, you know, every business shut. And what do you think that did to the budgets? They plummeted, right? Like most companies were not bringing in any revenue. Who let us out of that? Tech. Um, why? Because it drives down costs. Uh, so that was a great trial run, I think, for what role is tech playing after 20, 30, you know, 2020, whatever, 20, 25 years now. Um, a whole different role, right? Like if that, if we had March of 2020, the economic sh shelter in place um, with, you know, pets.com or whatever it was, uh, tech would not have, you know, the dot-com bus, the dot-com companies, tech would not have let us out of that. So I think that overall, what the market will have to contend with is, do I, you know, these are your bigger smart money institutional investors. Do I put my money in, you know, industries that have tons of headwinds, you know, that are very sensitive to consumer, uh, you know, or commodities and bonds that don't yield nearly what tech can yield? Or do I put it in these quality companies that continually show up and put 40% or more growth? Um, Microsoft came in strong. Google came in strong. AMD came in crazy strong. So now like, yeah, yeah, Facebook missed, but we've, you know, I've talked about IDFA for years. My first article ever was that in 2018 for the public markets, I've written tons before that for tech startups, but was Facebook has serious privacy issues. Why are public investors not understanding that? Um, that Cambridge Analytica was not going to go away, that that was the moment that Facebook's privacy issues would forever impact the company. Um, I was really strong on that because I could tell the public markets did not know how they used third-party data. They use third-party data in ways that no other company uses it. So if third-party data is coming under attack, Facebook's hanging out there as like the only company that has been using it in that manner. Um, so long story short, I don't think Facebook's miss is indicative of anything. I think it's indicative of how they've been using third-party data since really 2014 when they launched audience network and my prediction in 2018 was that this company was going to lose its access to third-party data which just happened in the earnings report so that's a very unique story that is not representative of tech as a broader industry so facebook's got to come back from that they got to figure out what's their next move now that third-party data has been shut down or diminished at least on ios so basically long story short uh this earnings season, uh, you know, is going to be interesting because people are saying, you know, tech is too high beta and it's too risky. And yet tech is going to be the only industry putting up big growth for the foreseeable future. So let's see who wins that tug of war. I think it's going to be tech. If that makes, I hope that makes sense because in 2010, tech's role really changed, became the most valuable industry over oil. So We've had trial runs in March of 2020 to see what that looks like. Now, 
with these technology names that you own, volatility, volatility is something that you're very, very familiar with. So mm. when I was looking into your fund and the articles you're writing, I wasn't surprised to see Bitcoin in there. Mm-hmm. And Bitcoin's currently down 50% as well, you know, like these other growth names. I'm curious yes. what your view is on the asset for this year and the long term as well. I could not be more bullish on Bitcoin. I would put it up there with like an NVIDIA um, on current conviction. I think eventually it will top out and we will probably take a lot of gains. Um, We see it definitely above six figures uh, for sure before we take any gains. And I think that that's really helpful, right? It's just not only do we show our losses in real time, but we show our gains. Um, So, uh, you know, I'm sorry, we we show when we take gains. So we did actually trim a lot in the 60,000 range because we felt like it was going to go through a pullback. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'll put this out there. I don't know anyone that has allocated better to Bitcoin alongside stocks than us. Uh, And that's because we are so drilled into the technical sentiment. Um, I, you know, we have a chart that we put out as to when we bought, when we sold, when we bought, when we sold, and we're frequently buying very close to the bottom, selling close to the top. It is a key position for us. Our portfolio could get hammered if we weren't careful. Um, because we have 